Hey guys, Ashley here with Hotbox Huts. It is March 5th, 10 days before the hut removal deadline of March 15th. We're out here on the west side of Cook's Bay. As you can see, we don't have any more huts to remove, so we're not worried about the deadline. If you do have a hut somewhere on the lake, the MNR is asking to remove them. Uh, we've got open shoreline here, lots of open water. Uh, this is one of the things that do usually go first, unless you're over on the east side of the lake, where a lot of this has blown over to. Uh, there is still pack ice over there, and there are still some people venturing out. I do not recommend it. It is not safe. Uh, as you can see for the main sheet here, it's rotten over here. Uh, and really, with one big wind event, it's all going to blow apart. So I don't recommend going out. I'd say that's a wrap for the season. It sure is for us. Um, but talking about the ice out, I'm going to hand you over to Donnie who wants to share some stuff about the ice this season. All right, guys. So this year presented us with some major challenges with ice quality. Uh, we did hit about 10 inches at one point here on Cook's Bay, which is, it's enough for us to operate on, but it wasn't 10 inches of the cold, hard ice that we want. And there's ways that we, we can tell that. So this year what happened was we had our normal freeze up, our normal flash over, and then we never got the cold nights following it to really build thick black ice. But we did build to that six inches, which is what we require to operate. But shortly after that, we ended up having a warm spell and, and a major precipitation event where we had over 20, 20 millimeters of rain. I think in areas here, we hit 40 millimeters and that caused some candling on the ice. A lot of the hut operators at that point pulled their huts, but we knew that there was gonna be cold coming in behind that that was gonna glue things back together. Now, when the ice does candle, you end up with, it, it's a little tricky to explain, but you have a sheet of ice and it's all solid, but it, it forms uh, a bunch of slivers, let's say. A bunch of slivers is the best way. I'd love to grab a piece and show you, but it's just too far out and I'm not gonna get that wet. So you have all these slivers sitting side by side and they become independent of each other. Now, the sheet will stay together because it's glued at the shoreline. Those pieces have nowhere to go. But when you put weight on that, you'll start to push through and water will come up. And we have a video, we may insert a clip here of us out in the Argo driving around during that first major candling event where you have water literally flowing right through the ice. But we knew we were going to be okay, so we left everything out. We continued to operate and things glued back together. That being said, when they glued back together, that good black ice that we had was now what we would consider candled old ice. Um, so we had to treat it differently. We knew it was going to go faster when it did go. The other thing too is when I'm out there cutting holes, uh, I don't measure a temperature anymore. I do a lot of this by feel, but when I cut a hole, I like to grab the shavings and feel them in my hand. Those shavings should burn my hand. They should hurt to hang on to. Those shavings should be minus 15, even if we have a plus, you know, or we're above, te above freezing temperatures uh, above the ice that ice down below should be burning our hands. That's what we like to feel. That's what we like to know. So when we do get a warm up, we have some time. This year, those shavings melted right in my hand. And we knew that when the season was going to end, it was going to go in a hurry. And it cre created a situation where we knew that the shoreline was going to look like this shortly. And we also knew that the ice on the main body of the lake and the main body of Cook's Bay, which we're looking at right now, and you see that it's dark gray. I can guarantee you right now, if we paddled out to it and went for a walk on that, despite there being probably about six inches of ice, all ice is not the same. And that six inches is what you're gonna fall through. Now, when the ice does leave and we have ice out, the ice doesn't go from six inches to five inches to four inches to three inches to two inches. What's gonna happen here is you can see the opening, uh, open water we have at the shoreline. The wind is gonna bounce this ice back and forth and it's gonna push up on the shoreline. It's gonna blow itself apart. Um, one of the worst seasons I've ever seen uh, in all of my ice fishing experience. I've seen years where we haven't had ice, but I have never seen ice go this fast. Luckily with our experience, we knew it was gonna happen. We, we were prepared and we got everything off safely and all of our clients were safe. And we, we did actually make the best of it. I think we got four weekends in compared to 10 is what we hoped for, but we do what we gotta do. And we'll see you around next year, guys. And we'll, we'll keep giving these reports and share as much information with you as you can to keep everybody safe. Thank you, Donnie. That was fantastic. And thanks to all of you for an amazing season out here on the lake. Yes, it was short, but we appreciated each and every one of you. 
we made the best of a short season. And I also want to thank you all for the warm welcome that I received this year. It was a big change going from chasing whitefish and lake trout to coming down here to the perch grounds and working with and meeting each of you. So over the off season, we'll be working on growing a new addition to the team. Uh, but until then, we'll see you next year on the hard water. And now for a message from the Invading Species Program. We can all do our part to prevent the spread of invasive species. For example, anglers can learn how to better identify the species of bait they are using and they must dispose of their bait bucket at least 30 meters away from the shore. Any, and everybody can report sightings of invasive species to help protect Lake Simcoe. If you suspect you have encountered an invasive species, mark your location, take a clear photograph, and call the Invading Species Hotline at 1-800-563-7711. See you on the hard water.